Good day and welcome to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and in this video I'll be taking a look at the Crypt of Blood Warcry starter set uh, just to see if it is indeed a good entry point into the game of Warcry for me as a beginner. Um, I'm not an absolute beginner, just a sort of disclaimer. I have played a little bit of Warcry last year at the sort of mid to, to late last year in Melbourne. I've played less than 10 games but I really, really have enjoyed it. Um, I just I love how fluid and simple the rules are and the mechanics are to pick up after a couple of turns you've pretty much got it um, but there's so much tactical depth to the game as well that I'd really like to explore going forwards now I've moved cities uh, and, I, and I only have a couple of war bands. I don't have any scenery, I don't have any tokens, I don't have a rule book. So I thought I'd start fresh by picking up this starter set. Now, the Crypt of Blood starter set here, um, I haven't even opened it yet. So we're going to take a look at the contents in there uh, and find out whether it is indeed a good starter set for you if you're looking to get into Warcry as opposed to some of the other means of getting into the game because there are a few ways that you can get into it. The Crypt of Blood starter set here in Australia, it costs $180. Um, now, before I get into the actual full review of it, $180 seems like a lot of money. It really does. But remember, this is a complete game somewhat. Um, you have two very small sort of half portion size war bands in here. Um, and all the rules, tokens, dice, uh, measuring sticks, and a tiny bit of terrain to actually play a full game or two or three or four of Warcry. Now, of course, the scale of this box set is definitely stripped down, and it is a small starter set as opposed to some of the previous starter sets. The, the first Warcry starter set that came out was gigantic and cost over $400 here in Australia. So at the time, I just couldn't quite you know, afford to buy a $400 uh, starter set with all of the trimmings. Uh, I, this is far more in my budget and probably many of you out there, um, I think you'd probably agree with me on this. So let's take a look at the actual contents in here, what you get, whether it's worth the value of $180 compared to some of the other ways that you could get into this game. Um, and you can judge for yourselves whether it's for you or not. All right, then let's take a look at the box for the Crypt of Blood Warcry starter set here. I've already butchered the box, by the way. It didn't come in cellophane. It came with those annoying sticky labels on it. Um, but on the back of the contents here, it's quite a small box. It's only sort of A4 size uh, and not very thick. Uh, so it's quite nice and compact. It's got a 72-page uh, start here book, a double-sided battlefield mat, eight fighter cards, two ability cards, 18 dice, range ruler, Warcry tokens. It includes eight Citadel miniatures. We'll go into those in more detail, as well as some scenery as well. Very scant scenery, I must say, but it's some scenery, so it's better than nothing. That is the outside of the box. Let's take a look at the inside of the box now. We have what seems to be quite normal in a lot of these starter sets, a cardboard illustrated thing. Uh, we got these in the Aeronautica boxes as well as some of the other boxes I've noticed. Good for, you know, posters and whatnot in your hobby dens, if you like. So we get that. We've then got the Warcry Crypt of Blood um, book here. I believe this is the rule book with all the tokens and the mat in there as well. We'll open that up and actually have a look in there. See what we get. Excuse the uh, horrible noise. I hate that noise myself. Um, what do we got? Let's get rid of the plastic for a second. The sort of battle mat, I suppose, unfortunately, is not made of cardboard. It is made of uh, paper. So this is only going to have a certain amount of longevity in it. Not much. On one side, we have quite a nice looking, also almost like a mausoleum of sorts with sort of skulls and morbid stuff on it. And on the other side, we have uh, an icy sort of frost grave sort of vibe going on there as well. Pretty cool. I quite like the images on that. It's just a shame that we haven't got it uh, as a sort of cardboard, uh, unfortunately, because that would be really nice. We've then got some, uh, you know, some instructions for building the two war bands as well as the um, some of the scenery and terrain in there as well. Very simple, very scant sort of terrain, but... Very, very easy to put together by the looks of it as well. We've then got some tokens. Uh, the tokens are really nice. Another reason why I bought this box set is because I don't have any tokens. So it is quite hard to play Warcry without any tokens. These ones are sort of wound tokens and activation markers and things like that. Um, I'll need to familiarize myself with what these actually do as I start to play the game again. But quite a, quite a few tokens there. Probably not enough for big, big games of Warcry, but enough to get me by for now, I have to say. 
With that, you get quite a nice chunky rule book by the looks of it. Um, it's actually quite a few pages. It's bigger than I thought. Um, it's not just a tiny weeny manual. Um, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of stuff in here. Um, you got a little bit about the uh, Zandai's Truth Seekers and the Crimson Court. A little bit of lore there. Um, learning to play, to battle, uh, battle plans, move actions, attack actions. You've basically got the core rules in here, uh, and it looks like. That's probably all you're going to need for playing um, for playing games of Warcry. Uh, you've got you know how you might want to build them and paint them, as well as lots and lots of nice pictures, the battle plans, so the setups of the scenery and whatnot. Um, that's pretty cool too. So certainly enough in here to sort of play the game from the off. And yeah, the rule book looks pretty good. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth on that, but you've got lots of different battlegrounds in here. And then towards the back of the book, by the looks of it, you've got the core rules. So that's pretty cool. Fighting the battle, the initiative phase, um, how it all works, how combat works, how move actions work. Um, and yeah, just the various different shenanigans that go on in a game of Warcry. Warcry, like I said, is very very simple. It's not a complicated game. Um, there's also a nice handy bit in the back that sort of tells you how to continue your games of Warcry, how to expand it from there. Of course, there is a core rule book which you can get from Games Workshop. I think here in Australia that's 80 or $90, which is very expensive. Um, you don't necessarily need this, but it does have all sorts of extra stuff as well as campaigns and whatnot in there as well. Uh, you've also got the Warcry Compendium 2, which has extra rules for all sorts of other stuff. You don't necessarily need these things, but if you want to expand on what you've got here, then, then certainly you'd want to look down that uh, nav avenue. Um, other than that, you're looking at some of the sort of best bike warbands that you can get as well. You've got the Asgurg and True Blades in here and the Quest of Soul, Soul Sworn, sorry. Um, beautiful models, particularly those Asgurg and True Blades. And your sort of monsters and allies there, a War Hydra, uh, some Dire Wolves and whatnot. Um, so just sort of highlights what you can do with the game from there. You can buy some more terrain and whatnot and build be bigger and better battlefields uh, than the one that you get here. So we've got a uh, some more stuff here. We've got some dice, just plain D6s. Unfortunately, they're not sort of pretty looking red and black dice that you used to get in the old uh, big Warcry box sets. You've also got the um, the abilities for both the Crimson Court and Zandai's Truth Seekers. These are really, really handy. It's worth mentioning that if you do buy a be bespoke um, Warband box set for Warcry, you do get uh, these in the box set generally as well. Um, so that's really handy to have. That's got all the abilities for that warband on there, as well as the reaction on the other side as well. Uh, you've then got the fighter cards for everything. So you've got um, the four vampires there and the three, um, three uh, what are they called, Stormcast Eternals with their pet in there as well. Pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, just nice to have physical cards for everything. We've then got the terrain, which is on one sprue. Um, one spur of terrain. Um, it's not a huge amount, like I said, but it's definitely um, it's definitely better than nothing. Uh, we've got a few walls and a sort of um, you know a coffin sort of thing, sarcophagus there as well. I'm going to put these together and see how they look. I think they'll be relatively easy to paint up. Just lots of dry brushing and oils and whatnot. And then you've got your two war bands in here as well. You've got your Zandai's Truth Seekers, and you've got the, the Vampires there as well. Beautiful miniatures, both of these, I have to say. Um, I believe they came out as Underworld's Warbands originally. And I think Underworld's Warbands in Australia here are usually around sort of $60, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but if you know, if you put to put those two together, that's 120 bucks worth of miniatures. Uh, when the box set is 180 bucks, I think it's more or less worth it. Um, you know, the only thing I wish that you had in here was, um, you know, a cardboard um, battle battleground, I think. But I do have plenty of things that I can use as battle mats as well from other game systems that will work quite nicely with this. But that's pretty much the contents of the box anyway. So in summary, is Crypt of Blood for you? I think it's definitely for me. 
Uh, now, $180. Uh, I've seen a lot of negativity around the price point. Is it too expensive? I don't think so. Like I said, like I highlighted with this, the two war bands alone, if you were to get those from an Underworld's kit, would cost you 50, 60 bucks each here in Australia. Add that together, you've got 120 bucks. The rule book, the, the, the extra terrain that you get in here, the scenery, I think it's worth about the right amount, 180 bucks. Of course, you can expand on this and you probably should expand on this by, you know, getting extra warbands and whatnot. If you're going to do so, those best spoke warbands for Warcry with all the cards included within cost $105 here in Australia, which is very expensive for them, but they are beautiful miniatures and most of those best spoke warbands you don't really need to do too much to from what I gather. Um, but I think it's a really good starter place for Warcry. The other options that you've got, you could just buy the core, rule, core rule book. Um, that will just give you the bare rules, but obviously more of them and more in depth with campaigns and stuff like that. Um, you could do that, but you're still going to need to get lots of scenery to actually play the games, and you're still going to need to get Warbands too. Uh, of course, if you play Age of Sigmar already, then most of those uh, models that you use in Age of Sigmar can be made into warbands for Warcry. So that's pretty cool. If you're not, um, if you don't have a background in Age of Sigmar, of course, you're going to need to buy new models for it. That's fine. The other option here as well is the, uh, on, I'm just looking at the Games Workshop website, we've got the Ravage Lands Scales of Talaxis box here, which is quite an interesting one. It is essentially a box of terrain, some really nice sort of walkways and multi-level stuff, which I think is crucial to add to Warcry. You do need different levels of terrain, not just the basic sort of uh, walls and stuff. Um, this has got some walkways, some trees in it. It's 185 bucks, which is quite expensive, but it does give you enough uh, terrain to add to this to, I think, expand on it and, and, and thus have quite a nice big board for most games of Warcry. You also do get some tokens in there as well, so I think the combination of that Ravage Lands box with this is probably quite a good one as well. Correct me if I'm wrong there. But I think if you can afford both, then you've got an excellent starting place because you're definitely going to have enough tokens. You're definitely going to have enough plastic terrain, which is quite nice and um, interactive. And you've got two sort of boards there as well. It doesn't actually say on the Games Workshop website whether this board is paper like this one. I'm hoping that it's cardboard, but if not, then it's not the end of the world because you can just use your own sort of Warhammer Wargaming boards as well. But some really nice um, terrain and scenery in that one as well for 185 bucks. Um, other than that, of course, you can be the cheeky one and get most of the rules online for free if you'd like to. I think there's a website called Warcry as well that you can check out. And there's also, I think Games Workshop actually do do a Warband Builder on their, on their website too. So there is a Warcry Warband Builder out there that you can use. If not, you could use Battlescribe for your Warbands and stuff as well, I imagine. Um, but lots and lots of ways that you can get into it. But I think, honestly, for me, starting out right now with my son, who's just about to turn 10, I think this is the, the perfect starting point for us um, to get into the hobby or to get into Warcry anyway, because we're playing other games. But um, yeah, two small war bands, easy to understand rules, easy to set up, easy to play. Um, and yeah, we're going to have lots of fun with this in the future. So that's really it for now anyway. Uh, and I'll be back with another video real soon. Peace out. Mm -hmm.